El Colegio Mexicano de Ortopedia, en su 75 aniversario, presenta su segundo congreso virtual 2021. El doctor Kevin Raskin estudió en la Universidad de California de Santa Bárbara. Es médico egresado y doctor en medicina en Sackler School of Medicine de Tel Aviv, Israel. Realizó su residencia en Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Montfiore Medical Center, con una especialización en oncología ortopédica en Massachusetts General Hospital. Es miembro de las Academias Massachusetts Orthopedic Association, Boston Orthopedic Club, New England Orthopedic Society y American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Contribuye como revisor editorial en diversas revistas entre las que se encuentran Clinical Orthopedic and Related Research, Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, American Edition, y Journal of the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. El Dr. Raskin hablará sobre Rescate de extremidades en el osteosarcoma. Hello, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here with you at least virtually. I hope you can see my screen and my uh, follow along with my talk on limb salvage in osteosarcoma. As we all know, surgery for primary bone sarcomas is a balance between oncologic principles and functional principles. In the past, we did amputations for everybody. It was the historic treatment for just about every malignant bone tumor. Uh, it was a great oncologic operation. It was the oncologic gold standard. But 50 years ago, the patients all still died, or at least 75 or 80 percent of them still did, and they died of pulmonary disease. But after a while, doctors began to become more clever, and then we started to ask questions. Why were patients dying after amputation? Well, they were dying of their metastatic disease. So they began treating patients with chemotherapy. And they noticed that with chemotherapy, the patients were living a little bit longer with their amputations. And then they began thinking, well, maybe we don't have to do amputation for everybody. What if we can have both an excellent oncologic outcome as well as an excellent functional outcome and keep patients' legs. So limb salvage surgery was born about 40 plus years ago. Uh, techniques in allograft and endoprosthetic reconstruction made limb salvage possible. And in fact, an article written in 1986 by Dr. Mankin and Dr. Simon together looked at essentially two groups of patients, one who had limb salvage surgery for their osteosarcoma and the other who had amputation. And both groups of patients lived the same length of time. They, their survival was no different. So they concluded that limb salvage has the same survival as amputation. So we have to render the patient disease-free and serve the oncologic goal of surgery. Our imaging studies allow us to visualize the tumor, see its reactive zone, and then plan to obtain a negative margin. Functionally, however, amputations actually do pretty well, don't they? You know, we know that patients with baloney amputations function quite well. They participate in all their sports. They live productive lives. They have very few complications. Uh, it requires about 20% more exertional effort in ambulation. However, I think if you were to ask a baloney amputee if there was a chance they could keep their limb, they might just say yes. 
And also, above-knee amputees certainly function less well than below-knee amputees. We know that it requires more effort to walk as an above-knee amputee. There are few complications. However, these patients are much more dissatisfied than even the below-knee amputation. So we have a functional gold standard that is how an amputee functions. And if we can achieve that or surpass that with limb salvage and obtain a superior oncologic outcome, then we've succeeded in both oncologic surgery and functional limb sparing surgery. So the idealized goal is to achieve the successful function seen with amputees, but avoid the psychological toll. Limb salvage avoids, avo av avoids psychological impact and hopefully preserves function. The difficulty is in use utilizing prostheses and soft tissues implants such that excellent function is available. There's many reports on the success of limb salvage, allograft, endoprosthetics uh, from the institution where I work, Mass General, uh, South America, all around the world. It's well established that we can successfully save limbs using endoprosthetics, allografts, and a combination of both. So just a word on allografts and using limb salvage for osteosarcoma. Here's a picture, obviously, of an allograft spanned by a large fragment plate. It was first described in 1881, where an interhuman osseous transplant was used as an intercalary graft in the humerus. And for the last 120, 130 years, we've been applying allografts to skeletal defects, and we got better at procuring allografts from uh, cadavers and managing their complications. There's reasonable success in using allografts, uh, infection and fracture being our biggest problems, including as well as non-union. This is a case of a distal femoral osteosarcoma treated with adjuvant chemotherapy and distal femoral resection, reconstruction with an osteoarticular allograft. Here's the allohost junction. This is the uh, allograft distal femoral uh, articular portion and held in place with a large fragment locking plate. This is a mid-shaft, very odd osteosarcoma of bone treated with a radical excision and an intercalary allograft. Intercalary allografts do the best. We find that their uh, uh, fracture risk is low, um, their infection risk is low, their uh, biggest risk we have in intercalary allografts are non-unions, um, either at one or both of the osteosynthesis sites. One trick that I use in trying to get my allografts, the intercalary allografts to heal, is maintaining the range of motion above and below the osteosynthesis. So in this case, I would exercise and urge the patient to use their hip and use their knees so that regain, they regain range of motion, and that helps healing at the osteosynthesis. Here's another, this is a lyomyosarcoma of bone, but same idea of limb salvage using allografts. Osteoarticular allograft of the proximal humerus, this is an adult, treated quite successfully with a healed host junction and a stable shoulder. This is looking at it in different planes. Survival of allografts, though, hinges on our ability to avoid complications. Infection, a fracture, or a non-union can be devastating with an allograft, and we usually see these complications within the first five years. This is a Kaplan-Meier graft showing that in the first five years, this is when we typically see the either loss of allograft function, a removal of allograft, et cetera. If we can get a patient out past five years, they often have a, a, a lengthy period of time where they're complication-free. But in a way, they're almost never complication-free because they'll always have this large piece of donated bone, which can certainly get infected. And we do have to replace joints around allografts occasionally when the uh, cartilage surfaces wear out. Looking ahead with allografts, we know that soft tissue coverage is critical to their health. Um, perhaps using bone substitutes and uh, free vascularized fibular bone grafts or, or free vascularized bone grafts in general. And we think locking plates or uh, spanning the entire allograft is a, a, a technique useful in their uh, maintenance of uh, union rates as well as preventing fracture. Now, what about metal, endoprosthetics? We use metal a lot. I use metal much more than I use allografts because it's easy. Um, we know that with implant technology, cementation techniques, and cementless implants, we can enjoy up to 85, 75% endoprosthetic uh, uh, success 
at five and 10 years, even more in some, some reports. They're easy. And like I said, they're very re reproducible, technically straightforward. So here's an osteosarcoma of the proximal femur in an adult, the gentleman from Puerto Rico who came to Boston to have his treatment. He was treated with uh, chemotherapy and wide surgical resection with a large proximal femoral endoprosthetic bipolar hemiarthroplasty. I typically use bipolar in the primary setting of proximal femoral resection and endoprosthetic reconstruction because it's more stable and the dislocation rates are lower. This is just an interesting case of a sarcoma that was unfortunately thought to be a prostate metastasis, turned out to be a high-grade bone sarcoma, which was treated with an intramedullary nail that we then had to widely excise, but we, able, we were able to rebuild it with a total femoral reconstruction. These have high rates of complication, mainly dislocation and infection. Eric Zegan, almost 20 years ago now, looked at 141 of the initial patients here at MGH and saw excellent results at, at three and five years. And those results are still about right now, 20 years later. I tell patients now they should expect to keep their implant, almost all of them at five years, and about between 50 and 75% of them at 10 years. What about combining allograft and prosthetics for osteosarcoma, for example? This is a fascinating sarcoma sitting in the intercondylar notch, treated with a alloprosthetic composite. This was widely excised using an extra articular technique. Here's the allograft knee on the back table being prepared. <clears throat> the knee was resected. There's the pathology. And rebuilt with an endoprosthetic distal femur, but an allograft proximal tibia such that the extensor mechanism could be reconstructed. And here's that on x-ray. This is the allograft host junction in an allograft prosthetic composite. Uniquely to osteosarcoma, though, we know that preferentially it affects children. Um, here in Boston, we have the Boston Children's Hospital, which has a very large experience in treating osteosarcoma in kids. But at Mass General as well, we also treat children, and we have a reasonable experience also. This is a case of a 14-year-old boy with a proximal humerus osteosarcoma treated with wide excision and allograft prosthetic composite. It's another case of a distal radius osteosarcoma <clears throat> in a child treated with radical excision and osteoarticular distal radius uh, re reconstruction. This is a very nice operation for a patient who wants to maintain wrist pronation and supination. Otherwise, in an adult, for example, or someone who's going to be lifting or a laborer, I would suggest doing a wrist fusion for a case like this. Here's a recent case I did of an osteosarcoma in the distal femur, a 14-year-old boy. And if you look at this MRI scan, the T1-weighted image here on the left, we see that there's a fair amount of bone that appears normal. So instead of going for a radical distal femoral resection, we did a unique intercalary resection where we kept just a sliver, a small amount of that medial bone. I'll go back. Here's the medial cortex. So we made a cut about 11 centimeters from the joint over to the medial cortex, down past the tumor, past the physis, and out laterally, creating an intercalary defect, which you can see here in an intraoperative x-ray and looking at it from the side. But we were able to keep his own bone and then using an allograft and internal fixation, rebuilding not only the bone defect from the cancer, but preserving his joint. This is another very interesting case of a 14-year-old boy who back in July of 2019 broke his proximal humerus. We thought it was a benign fibrous lesion. And in October of 2019, it looked healed. But then in December and January of 2020, it clearly had changed into a high-grade sarcoma. He was treated with adjuvant chemotherapy and surgery, and I reconstructed his arm with an, an osteoarticular allograft <clears throat> fixed with uh, uh, soft tissue anastomoses at the joint and a large fragment locking plate. And I think this is my last case of a 14-year-old young girl with an osteosarcoma of the pelvis. The dome of the acetabulum was involved, but she had uh, the inferior half of the acetabulum, 
that was intact. So we did a wide excision and we used a free vascularized fibrillar graft with an allograft. So I used an allograft to rebuild this large pelvic defect that we created. And the allograft had an articular surface to it. You can see here's the allograft host junction, but then we laid an al a free vascularized fibular graft onto the allograft to offer it some biologic support. So that's just a short review of my approach to osteosarcoma and limb salvage uh, with a concentration in children. I thank you for your attention. Hope to see you all soon.